What seems to be happening right before our eyes in these days is what you might call the secularization of Christmas. Secularization meaning that it's religious and spiritual prominence and message, what it has to say and how it says it has been dissolved out of the message. So for example, if you listen to the radio, CBC in particular, or if you look at the high street stores, the Christmas story, if it is mentioned at all, is put right there with Santa Claus and flying reindeer. It has been mythologized. It is now a fiction, a historical fiction, that makes this whole holiday season what it is. But as far as it being a narrative that shapes Canadian culture like it used to, those days are pretty much in the rear view mirror, I think. Most people might adhere to it in some nostalgic sense, but actually allowing it to speak directly and with shaping power into our lives, into our morals, into our worldview, those days are pretty much gone as far as the macro Canadian culture is concerned. And so the church has to speak more clearly and more precisely and with more conviction and persuasion than it probably ever has when it comes to the Christ message of Advent. In Isaiah chapter 11, we have two Advents that are tailored together beautifully. The first few verses of Isaiah 11 speak about the one who will rise up from the stump of Jesse, David's root, the king that will come, upon whom the spirit rests, spirit of wisdom and knowledge and power and discernment to rightly judge. Speaking, of course, of Jesus, a prophetic message from Isaiah 11. The next paragraph follows on seamlessly to explain to us, or expound really, the peace that will result from this one who comes in David's line. And the result is an eschatological peace. It talks about the lion laying down with the lamb, the child playing next to the cobra, that the lions will now eat grass like the, the, the cattle. So there's this sense in which the whole infrastructure of nature and the beauty and wildness of the world are re-choreographed within this eschatological peace that the Christ brings to harmonize all things. So Isaiah 11 gives us both of these side by side. It hardly stops to take a breath between the coming of the Christ and the global or cosmic peace that will endure. And it says that the knowledge of God's glory will cover the earth as the waters, the seas. So again, this striking image of the fullness of the disclosure of God's grace and glory and resurrection power blanketing creation in a new and glorious way. And both of these are advents. The first one is the arrival of the Christ child. The second one is the arrival of the risen and glorious Lord who will come to stamp his reign and mercy and justice and goodness upon the earth once for all. And we live in between. We live in the waiting, in the now and the not yet, in the what has been and the what will be. And the middle part is called faith. It is hanging on, it is living by, it is enduring, it is patience, it is this mysterious calling put upon the church to live by faith. And in this time to really speak up as clearly as possible about the truth of the one who comes in the name of the Lord to bring this enduring peace. And really peace is what our world is absolutely aching for on every level, whether it's internal, emotional, psychological identity type peace that every individual needs or peace for communities or regions or nations. I think our world is aching for peace in a profound and deep way. And the church has the story and it's not a myth and it's not historical fiction. It is a living truth that has the power when presented with clarity and conviction and precision. It has the power to slice through everything, all arguments and pretenses that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. And there is much that sets itself up against the knowledge of God in secular Canada. And so there's a, a great and difficult and challenging and wonderful opportunity that we currently live in, um, particularly at this season. So whatever platform you have, whatever voice you possess, then it is an opportunity to speak with kindness and with wisdom and with love 
and with confidence that this story is true. And not only is this story true, it is the truth, capital T, truth, that brings us this peace that we ache for. So proceed with confidence and courage into this Advent season. Till next time. Peace.